Well, let's get down to it. This is basically, uh, you can basically call this the Larry Bird, <laughs> Bill and Beer Beef. Uh, you can call it, what well, you can call this a number of different things, but let's talk about why Bill Lambeer isn't a head coach in the NBA. I think we need to discuss that. I think it's fair. Now, most of you know Bill Lambeer. You've probably seen videos where they showed him beating up somebody at wearing a Detroit Piston jersey with a number 40 on it, right? You've seen him whack Michael Jordan, knock him out of the air, and then they said all he did was knock people out. He just fouled people. Unfortunately, if you believe that, then you believed in vain. Bill Lambeer was one of the smartest basketball players on the basketball court. He knew how to mentally keep everyone focused, in the locker room, out of the locker room, he never backed down from any human being ever on a basketball court, period. He was a perfectionist. And here's a guy who never had to play the game a day in his life. This is a kid, a kid, as a child, grew up, with a father who was rich. Okay, we're talking high six figures. Working at a corporation in Illinois. Okay, where his dad was a partner in a conglomerate Fortune 500 company. And now he worked all his way up to president. So his son, Bill Jr., William Jr., rather, never had to work. He never, he could have went to school, got an education, and joined his father into the company business. But he wanted his own life and to do things for himself. He was the only player in the NBA whose father made more money than him. That's crazy. So imagine that. This guy was working hard. He's in practice on time, outworking guys who come from nothing. And I said, you know what's the hardest thing to do? And it's not to come from nothing. It's not the hardest thing to do. Because that's all you know. You, you're used to not having anything. So working to get something, you know, is okay. I put the work in. I get money. I get food. I get this. I work. I get it. You know, working towards something to get something. You know, you're going to go all out because what other choice you have? The hardest thing to do is when you do have it all. And you don't have to do this. And you still work as if you have nothing. That's the hard, that's where the discipline come in at. And that's what Bill Lambeer possessed. He reinvented the game of basketball. Before him, guys were not shooting, big men wasn't shooting three-pointers like that. He would fade out to the three-point line and shoot the threes and draw the big man out of the paint. Big man was supposed to dominate the paint. So he would sometimes drift out to the three-point line, break out the big man. So James Buda Edwards, who was the floor forward, he would get rebounds, or Rodman would get the rebounds. They played so unconventional with the pick and pop. The Golden State Warriors were modeled after them of their style of play. Bill Lambeer learned the game and saw the game just like Isaiah Thomas did, and that's why those two became so close because he could run the floor he can he can basically run the team knowing how the players run 
look, see who's open, then make a decision in a split second and capitalize. He showed up big, big moments, one of the best rebounders in the game. Bill Lambeer decided to take the ground root path. Ground root. He comes in and says, you know what, I'm going to come in and I'm going to coach and start at the ground level. He comes in and coached the WNBA team, the Detroit Shock. The Detroit Shock won three WNBA championships, if I'm not mistaken. From 2002 to 2009, he coached the Shock. And the Detroit Shock won the championships in 2003, his second year there, 2006, and in 2008. They were WNBA champions. Three championships in his reign. So the NBA decided to give him a shot as an assistant for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And while jobs opened up, you know, they basically didn't take heed to nothing he was doing. They just had him there as an assistant. And they weren't really seriously considering him. So he decided to go back to the WNBA. You know, it was just something to say okay he was an assistant in the nba and he went to join the new york liberty where he was the coach for four years and then he went over to the las vegas aces where he is now coaching because that's what he loves to do And I think this whole thing breaks down to a lot of reasons. The NBA was always afraid of Bill Lambeer and his character of him being the bully and all of these things. And the fact that kept him out of coaches, coaching is the fact that he's not the good old boy. You know, he's not he's not them. You know, he's he's not these other guys. And he's smarter than all these coaches. And and he knows it. And this all comes down to one person, Larry Bird. Now, they won the, the skills competition when he was with the Detroit Shock. And they had the G League players and they had the you know, WNBA players and when they had the skills competition. They won it. Bill put on the old Piston 40 and came out there and hit a half-court shot from three. And they won the trophy. And what was so unique was that Larry was still harboring ill feelings towards Bill Lambert from his playing days and still believes Bill, like Bill Lambert tried to hurt me and Bill Lambert, you know, he tried to end my career and we probably wouldn't be friends, but he's a great coach. He's like, I think he's a good coach, but, you know, I think he has a place for him in the NBA. So Larry didn't dog him as far as a coach and didn't talk down on him. But when it came to the opportunity of, of coaching, or they asked Bill Lambeer about it, Lambeer remarks, you know, it's just like, well, we've seen executives, you know, Larry, you know, how long has he been there? And Indiana hasn't won. 
you know, they haven't won anything, you know, and he still has a job. You know, like, okay, where's Indiana going? Why does he get to keep a job and, you know, everyone else, you know, they're on a short leash. And those comments he made kind of rubbed people the wrong way. Rick Carlisle, who was a teammate of Larry Bird, when they played it for the Boston Celtics, you know, he kissed up to Larry, and Rick's a decent coach. He's not, you know, a great coach, but he's decent. And he fired Isaiah Thomas, that Larry Bird, on 9-11. On 9-11, Larry Bird fired Isaiah Thomas' as head coach, taking over as general manager, as he was upset that the Indiana Pacers hired Isaiah Thomas as head coach over Rick Carlisle, who Larry recommended to Donnie Walsh that he put, put him in charge. But Bobby Knight superseded the whole Larry Bird situation because Bobby Knight and all his players and Donnie Walsh, they put Isaiah over in charge of the Indiana Pacers. Isaiah brought in talent immediately and turned that team to a contender who could go back to an NBA championship. Larry had just stepped down from coaching. He didn't want to do it no more after they lost in the NBA Finals. He was like, that's it. I'm done. I don't really want to be a head coach anymore. So he stepped down. And right after they lost, he stepped down. Rick Smith ended up retiring. So they had no big man. Isaiah had to really build from scratch. So he brought in Jermaine O'Neal. Right? He brought in Brad Miller, brought in Ron Artest. From that point on, the Indiana Pacers were building themselves to be a powerhouse and to be able to vie for an NBA championship. Isaiah put the pieces together, and he did not get a chance to see it flourish as Larry Bird came in and removed Isaiah and put his buddy, Rick Carlisle, in position. Bird, well, Lambeer didn't like this one bit, and Isaiah didn't like it one bit, but it was his... You know, he was the general manager. Donnie stepped down, Larry took over, and that was that. And it's been that way ever since. Now, Carlisle eventually had to get let go. He had to let Rick go because it wasn't working in Indiana for his buddy. He goes to Dallas. Well, he went to the Detroit Pistons. Then he went to Dallas. And he won a championship in Dallas. Now, where does this connect? And how does all of this transpire? Remember, Rick Carlisle is best friends with Larry Bird. Lambeer says something about Larry in an interview and how if you know, they would never be sitting at the same table, and he's like, you know, we probably wouldn't even speak if we saw each other again, and all of these different things. Larry still thinks he's a dirty player, but as a coach, he was good. Blah, blah, blah. Rick Carlisle is something that you guys don't understand. The National Basketball Coaches Association, he is the president He is the president. So as president of the head coaches union, 
they have all these meetings that they take place. Rick Carlisle, who still goes under the law of Larry Bird, if Larry doesn't want something, they're not going to make Bill Lambert a head coach. No way. They don't want to have to deal with Bill Lambert. Period. They were like, do you want Bill Lambert in your meetings? He's not, and the thing is, is he's not dangerous. He's just not one of their guys. You know, he's 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 too Detroit. He's too loyal to the to what he is. You know, and unfortunately that's just not that's frowned upon in this business. Well, you got Eric Exposer, or whatever his name is, Exposter, from Miami. He's the vice president. This guy was in the film room. He's the vice president. Nate McMillan from the Pacers. He's the treasurer of the whole um, coaches association. Dwayne Casey is the secretary. And Chip England from the Spurs is the trustee of the retirement plans for the coaches. And the reason why is because Pop said, I don't want nothing to do with it. So he can let Chip England do it. But Rick Carlisle and the rest of these coaches, are they going to get them all on board to basically blackball and beer out of positions? And they're going to keep giving people jobs that they shouldn't. Like, there's no way the Detroit Piston head coaching job should have went to anybody else in this world except for Bill Lambert. Why wouldn't the Detroit Pistons hire Bill Lambert? They're like, well, Lambert's past his prime, and everywhere this guy has went, he's won. He's won two NBA championships. He's played in three NBA finals. This guy has is a rebounding phenom changed the game from the big man one at the WNBA level won three WNBA championships and you telling me this man is not capable he's not a guy that's capable of being a head coach for the Detroit Pistons or any other team in the NBA now, I'm glad they got Casey in there as the Detroit Pistons coach. I mean, that's fine. So, But I'm talking about before they had Casey and they had Van Gundy when Carlisle was there. You know, Rick shouldn't have had that job over Lambert. And that was then. So the fact that not one head coaching job has popped up in the league and Bill Lambeer's name is not on that list shows and tells you they don't believe he's going to kiss the ring. It's unfortunate, but it's like somebody wants him to kiss the ring. And that's where we are right now. And that's why he doesn't have a, a job in the NBA. So I'm out. Don't forget to hit up the Cash App. Carcino, the name on the Cash App. And definitely uh, hit my Patreon up. Uh, Carcino for life on the Patreon. And yeah, that's about it. I'm out.